Welcome, traders, to this week's uh, live analysis session with me, um, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me loud and clear and see the tick mill welcome screen on the chart, you can type a, a Y in the chat box. That would uh, that'd be great. So I know that we uh, you can hear me and see my screen. Okay, let's get going. Um, before we do jump into today's uh, today's analysis, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Um, trading any financial instrument carries a high level of uh, financial risk, and uh, and we want to be cognizant of that. And mo most importantly, the, the views expressed here today are solely mine and they don't constitute investment advice and or are they representative of TICMIL. So uh, for those who are, uh, are new to this session, it's the first time here. Um, my name is Patrick Munnell. I've been trading or I've been involved in the financial markets for uh, the past 15 years. Um, I wasn't always involved in financial markets after I graduated university. I um, I joined a consulting firm in London and eventually left that firm with a couple of other employees and did a startup that experienced pretty rapid growth over a four to five year period. And I, uh, I cashed in my stake in the company uh, when we merged with another business. And so then I had a, a bunch of time on my hands and, uh, and some capital to play with. So I started to explore my passion for markets. I, um, through the nature of the the work I was doing in uh, in my prior role, I had a, a front row seat really to the, uh, the dot com boom and bust, seeing people make and lose a fortune um, quite literally overnight in the market. So I started um, meddling or gambling really, I guess you'd more accurately refer to it as um, in the e-mini S&P and um, day trading that market was uh, was heavily trending and I caught some lucky early breaks, um, made some solid and then some quite significant gains. But when the market phase shifted, um, I started to average down into what became a significant losing position uh, to the point that I actually took a six figure hit and, uh, and really had to take a look at myself and think what was going on. Um, and so it was at that stage, I, you know, took some time to think about whether or not I could make trading work in terms of delivering a, a sustainable income. And, uh, and I came to the conclusion that I, I, I thought I could, but what I needed to do was to seek out uh, a mentor, someone who um, demonstrated excellence in the field of trading, who I could model their, their behavior essentially. And so I worked with my mentor for uh, about 18 months, two years, uh, not just on my technical game, but more importantly, my mental game. So really um, having a much higher level of self-awareness, understanding um, psychological drivers involved in, uh, in, in trading and in personal performance management, which is something I, um, I spend a lot of time working on. Um, so by, over, that, over that period, I developed a trading plan, a business plan, fully back tested and forward tested. Then I came back into the markets with, cap, with my capital um, in 2008. And, uh, and after a rough start, uh, certainly that January, I remember, um, I managed to, to continue to trade uh, through that period and actually um, came out uh, with a positive return on, at the year end. And since 2008, I've managed to, uh, to deliver positive returns on an annual basis. Now, um, the reason why uh, the screen it shows from 2013 to now is that in 2013, I actually started a managed account service. Initially, it was for friends and family who saw what I was doing and wanted a, a piece of the action. And then it's grown organically um, with external investors. And I, I now manage a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, and like I say, the, the focus for me really is on excellence in terms of trading process. Um, I don't, I'm not 
attached to the outcome of an individual trade or even a, uh, a string of trades where my focus is is on the next hundred trades and I know that if I adhere to my plan execute that with excellence then uh, then the the returns will take care of themselves that's not to say I don't have losing trades or losing months or multiple losing months that's that's simply not the case that you know that is that's a reality of, of, of the business um, but over a, a, an extended series of outcomes so the next hundred trades I'm, I'm expecting to to deliver positive or see my edge demonstrate itself and um, and I'm looking you know my my real focus is on you know these annual returns um, key metrics down here that I keep a keen eye on are these uh, the average losing month being a negative 2.4 percent whereas my average winning month is 8.1 percent and so you can extrapolate that out to the idea that you know I'm looking to have a two to three times risk reward ratio in terms of uh, in terms of my trades and uh, and by focusing on that um, you know that's where I, I can deliver uh, deliver these returns um, over time so that's just a bit of context with respect to me um, I'm obviously I've got a couple of other projects I'm involved in I'm you know the uh, market expert in res <coughs> sorry market expert in residence at Ticknell I deliver a daily market outlook and a daily setup that I'm watching you can subscribe to to those and get notifications via the Ticknell blog um, the other project that I'm heavily involved in is uh, Head of Trading and Trader Education for FX Career Swap, an emerging uh, retail uh, trading talent development firm. Really, we're taking um, aspiring professional traders. We're giving them a, a fully uh, full development program based around um, fundamentals of, of trading the forex markets, and then some bespoke <laughs> strategies I've been using over the past. 10, 12 years now, sorry. Um, and so, in, and then what we're, we're basically doing is we are, or, or we believe so much in the quality of the education we're providing that we um, we ultimately fund traders um, with, a, with an account at zero personal uh, financial risk. And, um, and then they can grow that because the biggest problem that retail traders basically face is, is this is the idea of capitalization and you can have a fantastic trading plan and you can uh, and if it's underpinned by professional risk management um, strategies whereby you're risking you know less than one percent per trade even if you have a great year and you deliver 30 or 50 percent if you're only trading a thousand dollar account um, you know 300 or 500 pounds isn't really going to move the needle in terms of financial returns so what tends to happen to, to retail traders is that they, um, they experience some success with what they're doing in terms of their trading plan and their, their discipline with respect to risk um, but then they become disconcerted by the lack of financial gain and so they tend to overextend themselves and, um, and in doing so when their strategy comes into a small drawdown the, the losses are, are amplified to the point that they ultimately end up over leveraging and, and blowing up their accounts. And so what we're saying to, to, the, to, to, <coughs> to potential professional traders is take that money, invest it in yourself, and then you, you'll um, ultimately have the opportunity to trade a meaningful sum of capital and to grow that sum of capital over time. And if anyone's interested, we're actually running a 14-day free trial um, for that service at the moment. I'll put the link into the chat. Um, you can either sign up through there or message me on LinkedIn and I can, uh, I can give you more information. So that, uh, that brings you up to speed with, uh, with who I am and, um, and the, the projects I'm involved with. Uh, now let's think about the, uh, the market. So before I get into the actual charts, I just want to Give you a heads up in terms of as i always do thinking about the seasonalities um, with respect to the market uh, the dollar uh, has weakened this month um, in what should have been its its best month of the year and this is indicative i think of of some bigger forces that are at play in the market um, with respect to the vast liquidity that is being 
thrown at the market um, by the Federal Reserve to um, to support risk assets. And so um, the seasonal uh, seasonal tendencies are a little bit out of whack at the moment, to my mind, and, and we've been driven more by this this vast sum of of liquidity that's been put to the market. We're also seeing um, the all, all global central banks all going down the same path essentially as they try to plug up significant holes that have uh, that have been caused by the <coughs> coronavirus pandemic. And so it's um, we're seeing this dollar weakness develop at the moment. And if we go into the um, monthly chart, and this is a chart I, I, I keep an eye on. And uh, for those of you who are uh, regulars or returning here, you'll know that I've been tracking this trend line <coughs> in the monthly dollar index. This is the, the broad dollar index, the broader basket, six, six currencies in the US dollar. And you can see similarities here we're getting potentially a triple rejection now of this trend line. If we close at these levels or lower um, at the end of next week, then that uh, that will be a, a harbinger for the dollar. I think this is the, it could be the start of, of this, this weaker dollar move. Even in terms of the momentum studies as well, they're all setting up pretty similar to how they did for this last leg lower in the dollar. So what I'm looking for ultimately will be a equality move. So equal legs. Um, initially, I think, you know, obviously what I'd be looking for is a test of this trend line support um, where we could get a bounce. But ultimately what I'm anticipating over time is that we see a test of this equality move um, probably back down into this 88 area as the, um, as the move I'm looking uh, to play out in the in dollar. And then obviously that feeds into the euro, the euro being the, the major constituent of the, uh, the dollar index basket. And you can see the inverse, basically trades the inverse. And we're holding here at, um, at this trend line support. And again, you can see these tails suggesting to me, if we think just purely in terms of price action, that, um, that certainly significant demand in and around this 108, 107 level and um, and certainly, if we can uh, if we can see some follow through to the upside, then I think we can revisit the the 115, 114, 115 area. Through there, what I'd be looking for is a test of this major trend line, which would be up at 118, 119. So that's what I'm looking for in terms of the bigger picture. Now, if we think in terms of near term trading opportunities, well, last week I talked about the idea of this um, 125.74 area, 125.60, as being potential resistance. Um, this is the uh, equal weighted dollar basket, the, the Dow Jones dollar, which is equal weighted versus um, the Australian dollar, the Euro, the Japanese yen, and um, sterling. And we got a, a bearish rejection from that area and uh, We've since taken out the trend line support that I've highlighted to be cognizant of. Uh, we're moving through there. Looks like we're weakening up a bit again today. Um, target for this move initially is going to be uh, an equal leg move, which would take us down into this um, 124 handle. So that, uh, you know, expecting that to play out something like this. Then, as we potentially see, uh, you know, a correction from here, nothing. Oh, markets don't tend to go in a straight line. Obviously, looking at that move there, you could question that idea. But um, what I'd be looking for is that is some uh, a corrected move to develop in around this 124. It is actually now um, versus this swing high, uh, an equal leg from this structure here. And so I'm looking for uh, for a test ultimately down to this 122 area. So whilst we're hold, whilst this high is in place, then um, for me all roads point down to this this 122. And so in terms of my my trading, I've been as I mentioned last week, I was um, I was long the euro. I got a signal on Friday to go long the euro. I took profits as we tested the trend. Uh, 130 pips out of it.
And I've gone back into the euro this morning um, from 109.60 and, uh, and see if we can get the drive now to test the equality objective, which is um, versus this, I call this the interim equality objective uh, at 110.50. But ultimately what we'd be looking for now is this bigger equality objective or the primary equality objective versus this reaction low, reaction high and secondary low. Is, uh, is actually up here at 112.30. So again, I don't think we're gonna go there in a straight line. What I'll be looking for is a test of this 110.50 and then maybe to retest the descending, broken descending trend line resistance as support, which would set up the next leg, which should take us up to that 112 area. So like I said, I'm long at the moment and uh, I'm looking for a test now of, uh, of this 110.50 um to uh to play out obviously we'll it should probably be sticky around 110 20 those price <coughs> price swing highs but uh if we if we can take out stops above there then we should see further short covering that should take us into that that 110 50 area <coughs> so that's what i'm uh doing with respect to the euro at the moment i'm watching um here in the swissy we're sitting on the trend line support and we've got a nice inside day candle developing here. And if we can, we can see this candle close at these current levels, just sitting on the support, then what I'd be looking to do um, heading into uh, the New York close tonight or the London open tomorrow would be to sell a break of this trend line because similar to the dollar index and obviously to the euro, we've got bigger, um, primary equality objectives to, to to target here and so if we can take out this trend line then what I've been looking for would be for um, Swissy to ultimately come down and test this 93 handle now more likely than not we get to 95 and we we have a little bounce similar to the idea that I've just talked about in terms of the euro so a corrective pullback maybe into these prior lows here but ultimately, I think um, we should be heading for a test of the of the 93.90, which is the equality objective, and certainly versus this resistance area at the 97.50. Um, dollar yen, watching this one, uh, we can't. We, I, I was looking for it to actually test the equality and symmetry resistance at the 108.50, but we're struggling to uh, to get up there. Um, we're at we're sitting at uh, the month <coughs> the monthly pivot um, weekly R1. We've got the monthly VWAP just above us here, and we're into the volatility resistance area. And so, if I get a, if we get a close tonight sub 107.40, then I'll be taking a look at this this one on the short side because um, what I see here is you know we take out this trend line, and then again I've got an equality target versus this structure here down at 104.68. So if we can take out the trend line support, get a close below the daily VWAP, then, uh, then that will green light my a short setup here to take us down into that 104.50. So that's another one that's on my radar tonight. Um, Looney, similar setup again. We're sitting at trend line support here. Um, well, we're just above it in what is potentially a descending triangle. And again, we've got a target, an equality target versus this structure down here at 136.13. So if we can close in and around the lows here, then I, I, what I play for is a break of the monthly VWAP, the, the uh, triangle support, and ultimately be looking for a move then down to test 136 in the loony. Um, so that's another one that's on my radar. Uh, it's nothing in the Singapore dollar, um, euro yen. I'm watching for the euro yen to test a, a target here. We've got this structure, so we've gone through the equality objective. So now we look at the 161 extension of this structure, that swing, and then I bring in the symmetry swing. And um, you can see that that's lining up now with the 161 extension. And if we just pull up the fibs, just for additional confluence, 
We've also got this 78.6% retracement. So what I look for here in the uh, euro yen is a move up into this area and not necessarily looking to, to short it at that stage, but we get then a symmetry swing here, like so. Then what I'd actually be looking for would be a long setup to, uh, to target a retest of these prior highs at the 121 area. So that's another one that I'm just uh, keeping an eye on. Let's check in with Sterling. So Sterling had, um, due to the, the, the Brexit issues, the, the you know, and the way basically that the, the UK government is deemed to have mismanaged um, the Corona pandemic. Sterling has been under pressure, um, but we're seeing we've, we've taken out the descending trend line here, and what I see the potential for now is a is a, sym a symmetry swing to play out, so an equal leg move, which could take us back up into um, that 124.50 area. So what I've been looking for with um, with Sterling here is a, a bullish inside candle to close at or near these these prior highs, and then to break uh, as we get, uh, over the, over the coming sessions. So we'll see where we close tonight. But if we can get a close um, towards the highs here at this 122.80. Then, um, then that would that would also be a, a long signal, and um, we target a move up into this 124.60. Who knows? We could be going higher, but initially that's where I would look for for some profit taking to um, to develop. And obviously we get a nice risk reward there um, because we've got this inside candle. So that's also uh, one for the radar. Uh, the Aussie. So, so um, watching this as well. Uh, looking for a move now to test this long-awaited target here at the, at the 67 area, where I think if we if we look down at the momentum studies, you can see we've got significant um, divergence developing now. So if we get up into this 67 area, and uh, we still have divergence, we've got the 78.6% retracement of the crisis decline, we've got the equality objective all sinking up at 67 so i'll be looking for a bearish reversal potentially from the monthly r1 there to um to see a, 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 a at least a corrective move three wave move lower in uh, in the aussie um so that's a, that's one that is, is also on the radar we've got a similar story in the aussie yen here uh, we've got some type oops we've got uh got divergence developing and we're coming up into that equality target versus the, um, the move off the reaction lows here. So looking for a test at the 72 area and watching for bearish reversal patterns to, um, to potentially do something on the short side in the Aussie Kiwi. Similar deal in the Aussie Swiss, looking for a pop higher and equality move now would take us into that 78.6% retracement area. Monthly R1, so just above 65. I think we get uh, we could get a, a tradable correction from those levels. Uh, the other trade that I'm actually in at the moment is the Aussie Kiwi. Um, looked at this this five wave structure, momentum divergence, and um, and we've certainly seen at least at the present time some profit taking um, from long positions. This was the signal candle, this bearish reversal pattern from the volatility resistance and the uh, the equal equality move into that that potential fifth wave high here so we'll see how um we'll see how we trade uh, i've got to stop now just trailing this this daily vwap but what i'd ultimately be looking for would be at least to move back down into these prior highs here at the 105.20 and um keeping an eye of course on this area first of all which is the trend line support so you know, we could, um, we could move in back into here and still make one more high in what would be like an ending diagonal pattern. So we can make another high here. By that time, we'd have, some, I would imagine, significant divergence. And, um, and from there, then we get that move. But by the time we, if, if we trade down to this area, the trade will be uh, will be risk-free by that stage. So we'll just see how it plays out. But ultimately looking for at least a test of this one, 105 area. So a couple of hundred pips lower, and I'm only risking about 50 pips on that trade. Um, Kiwi, uh, 
similar story. I, 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 I was long the Kiwi um, and, uh, and took profit on that last night, took about uh, just over 100 pips out of it as we test into this resistance area. So if we can get a close through here, through this resistance, then that's going to open up a move um, to this 6430 area. So I'll go back into the Kiwi if we can get that close. So I'm, I really want to see a close above 61.70 to, um, to open the doors then for some momentum higher here to then test 64.38 to 64.80. That's 78.6% retracement. And we've got the equality objective here. So um, I've already taken some profits in that, but I'm going to watch now for, uh, for potential to re-enter here, depending upon how we trade today. Um, or in the coming days, again, what I'm looking for is that close above this prior high to negate the potential triple top here and another pullback. So that's what I'm watching in that one. Um, Kiwi Yen, I highlighted this as chart of the day earlier in the week and it's playing out. Again, now what we need to see is that close above this range resistance to open the, open the door um, to a test of, of the 70 level. Um, we've got the equality objective up here at the 69.50, 78.6% retracement just above. So, you know, there's a, there's a nice target zone here. So we get a close above range resistance, and I think this thing can break out, and then we're trading up to, to the 70 level. So um, watching the close there, and then what I'd be doing is then using intraday charts to get into that trade um, to, to basically target that, uh, that equality objective. Uh, last but not least, we're looking at, uh, oh no, there's a couple more actually. Um, the S&P, looking for this to break out now, highlighted last week. And this, you know, the, the Aussie and the S&P are basically trading in tandem at the moment. So if the, you know, the Aussie and the S&P can both hit these equality objectives, 78.6% retracements, it's from these levels that I think we can see at least a correction develop. And so I'm watching this, these areas closely and watching the Aussie and the, uh, the S&P, because if you can't, for whatever reason, if you can't trade the S&P, um, you can certainly use the Aussie at the moment as a really nice proxy for it. So if we can get up into this area, get a bearish reversal pattern, then I'll certainly be looking at shorts in the, uh, the S&P. Um, gold, starting to, uh, starting to see the reaction here. Let me see, I thought I had another chart, one second. Yeah, I do. So yeah, with gold, looking at the, it, it basically traded to the tick, to its equality objective, and we saw it sell off. Now, potentially today, we get a, uh, a confirmation signal with a close below the near-term BWAP, and I think that sets up a move then um, for an equality swing equal to this last swing that we saw over here should play out from here so i'll be looking for a move down into this 1525 area the trade is is you know the market is very long gold at the moment it's a crowded trade and what we often see in these situations is we hit these equality objectives uh, we break out of the triangle like we did somewhat prematurely i would have liked to see another test of the triangle support here to confirm the abcd pattern but we didn't get that we broke out and now we're stalling to the tick at the equality objective so if we get a a reversal here, there's a, I think there's a short opportunity in gold and we could see a, a meaningful swing to the downside. Certainly what you want to be doing is getting the trade risk-free by the time we're testing this, uh, this ascending trend line support, but I think you know, the scope potentially for, uh, for a bit of a shakeout in gold. Um, and last but not least today, crude oil. Um, crude oil is looking, uh, looking like it's uh, on track for, uh, for a recovery here especially as these economies reopen, as long as we don't get any um, seriously negative news with respect to reinfections um, in the coming weeks, then I think we see a correction in gold and it's going to set up uh, a pretty nice inverse head and shoulders pattern here, or potentially at least. And, um, and certainly I'd be looking at, uh, at opportunities in crude. And that's we can get a move back down into this $20 area, these prior lows over here, bullish reversal patterns on the daily close here for me, and then I'd be long, and obviously what I'd be looking to do would be to target an equality move, uh, which would actually take us up into the 50% retracement of the entire decline 
that we saw in crude. This is the continuous contract, obviously, not the futures contract, but looking for 38, uh, $38 here. So, you know, pretty decent move to, to trade for if, uh, if we can get this pattern to set up. So that's the, uh, that's, those are the charts that are on my radar and the setups that I'm watching and, uh, and the two trades that I'm currently in at the moment. Are there any questions? Does anyone have a chart they want me to take a look at that I haven't covered? You can type it into the chat box or the question box. And I'm happy to uh, happy to take a look at um, any other charts or, or give a view on the charts. Okay, no, uh, no questions or charts. That's good. I must have done a wonderful job of explaining this all to you today. Um, okay, guys. Well, look, yeah, that's that's where I'm up to. So I'm uh, long the euro and short the Aussie kiwi at the moment, and I'm watching the kiwi pairs, especially this kiwi dollar, kiwi yen, key closes potentially above some range resistance to to start another leg higher. Uh, watching the Swissy, the yen, and the loonie as well as they potentially break out with this dollar weakness so um and then keeping a very keen eye obviously again uh on these monthly closes they're uh they're, they're, look, they're starting to um to show real signs of potential um future development here so i strongly suggest you uh you keep those on your your radar as well okay thanks very much for your time everyone and i hope uh, i hope that was helpful